Welcome, everyone. We are very happy to have you join us for today's webinar on how to speed new product development insights from leading innovators. So we're even more excited to have a great customer panel for you today and hope you find this to be very educational. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. So we've taken a screenshot of the attendee interface and this is an example of what you should see on your own computer desktop. The presentation is now in full screen mode. If you need to exit full screen mode, you can select your viewing preference by using the menu bar, the more option. You will have an opportunity to submit your text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the Q&A section of the control panel by selecting the Q&A icon as shown on your desktop. So you may send in your questions at any time during today's presentation we will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation today. So we're asking that you, know, you submit your questions and we will answer them all during the, at the end. So, and just to let you know that we are recording today's session and this presentation will be shared with you via email after to the event. So I would now like to introduce our moderator and panelists for today's discussion. First, I would like to introduce Scott Reedy. Scott is the Senior Director of Marketing at Arena and will moderate the customer panel discussion today. Prior to working at Arena, Scott spent a decade working in engineering for a high-tech manufacturer and later worked in consulting, helping companies implement product lifecycle management systems. So now I would like to introduce our customer panelists and I will begin with Christine Pompa. Christine is the Director of Quality Assurance at Imagine Corporation, a manufacturer of OLED micro displays for the military and industrial markets. She has over 25 years of experience in manufacturing and operations and has been responsible for implementation of QMS systems, ERP software, and PLM systems. She holds a BS in mathematics from Niagara University and an MS in applied statistics from Rochester Institute of Technology. And next we have Julie Toscano. Julie is the configuration and process manager at Sonos, the inventor of multi-room wireless home audio. So with 20 years of electronic design and new product introduction experience and over five years of PLM experience, Julie brings a wealth of process knowledge on successfully transitioning designs out of MPI and into production. Julie has a degree in electrical engineering from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And our third panelist today is Jeremy Timothy. Jeremy is a configuration analyst for Listen Technologies. He has been working closely with engineering and manufacturing for over eight years. Jeremy was the initial implementer of Arena PLM for his company. Before his current position, he worked many years as a product manager. He has experience with electrical and mechanical manufacturing processes, change management, document, document control, and also new product development. So he has an MBA from the University of Phoenix, a Bachelor of Science degree from Brigham and Young University, and is project management certified. So that concludes our speaker lineup for today. And with that, I would like to turn the mic over to our moderator, Scott. Great. Thanks, Elaine. It's great to be with everyone today. Um, we've got some great companies represented on our panel, and our panelists have well over 60 years of experience, but uh, they also told me that they started working around age 15. Uh, our panelist companies manufacture complex consumer electronics, and these are products that have software, sensors, electronics, and hardware. And they're also leveraging new technologies like the Internet of Things, augmented and virtual reality, and other wireless technologies. So I want to get started by getting a little more background on our speakers and their companies so you have a better idea as to what types of companies and technologies are represented today. So to start, um, tell us a little bit about your company and what you find exciting about your products, your technology, or your future plans. And Christine, why don't we start with you? Hi, Scott. Thanks so much. Um, I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, Imagine manufactures OLED micro displays, which are uh, organic LED displays about the size of a postage stamp and you can see from the photo on your screen our displays are used in head mounted devices that provide virtual reality imaging to military ground soldiers. Um, they help train pilots in 3D flight, flight simulations, support medical imaging devices, and assist in a lot of night applications night vision applications. Um, the technology is really groundbreaking and it's exciting to be part of this industry. We're constantly working on creating brighter displays and smaller configurations that use less power. Great, thanks Christine. Yeah, that's really cool technology. Um, and Julie, what about Sonos? 
Hey, Scott, thanks for inviting me to be here today. Uh, at, at Sonos, we're focused on bringing the best sound experience possible to our customers. No matter what you want to listen to or how loudly you want to hear it, Sonos fills the room with clear and detailed sound that you can feel all around you. Sonos works with uh, all the streaming services and voice assistant services that you know and love. And it's, it's been really cool to be part of a team that brings music to people's lives and also help them imagine new ways in which we'll be able to do this in the future. Nice, yeah. And being a product that's sold to consumers, I suspect that many of our attendees either have Sonos products or know someone who does. That's great. And Jeremy, tell us a little bit about uh, Listen Technologies. Yes, thanks, Scott, for having me here today. I'm excited also to be here. Listen Technologies designs and engineers and manufactures wireless audio products. We have over a hundred purchasable parts with thousands of components and part and uh, and parts. We have 100 purchasable products with many parts. We, our products provide solutions to those who may be hard of hearing in, or maybe in environments where there's competing background noise. The applications that most use our devices are theaters or churches, tours, sports bars, restaurants, or even health clubs. While most of our products have a proprietary electrical and mechanical design, we recently created a smartphone application in conjunction with a Wi-Fi server that we, we produce. So this is really exciting for our company. That's great, yeah. And you, as you talk about that smartphone application, can you give us an example as to what a use case for that might be? Yes, uh, uh, we have a large sports book in, in Las Vegas, Caesars Palace, who has many displays that are showing different sporting events to the to the different people within the sports book. And to be able to capture the audio from each of those displays, we have produced an app that will be, that will gather the channel, that will collect the channel from the Wi-Fi and be able to play it back for on their, on a smart device. So it's a really revolutionary application and it's something that has been asked for many times in the past. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know that that technology existed. So that's great. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll move on to our next question. You know, we've learned um, over many years that small and medium sized companies tend to start with smaller point solutions like Excel, Word, and other file sharing solutions. And I know some of you have used manual systems or spreadsheets prior to implementing a product lifecycle management or PLM system. So what were your biggest challenges that you faced and what impact did it have on getting products designed into market? And Christine, why don't uh, we start with you? Um, sure. Uh, I think our biggest issue before launching PLM was having confidence in the accuracy of our data. Um, when we used a manual system, it allowed people to save files anywhere they wanted, and there was always a risk of not knowing whether you had the latest or most accurate information when you looked at a drawing or a bomb or a work instruction. And it was challenging even a small company to prevent multiple versions of the same item from being used throughout our operations. Um, Speaking from a doc control aspect, it was also challenging to hunt people down and get them to review and approve changes. Um, a change would really sit in queue until that function reviewed and approved it, and then would get carted off to the next function and then the next, so not a very efficient means of getting things done. Yeah, I, you know, I, I remember when I ran engineering services doc control many years ago, there was a, it's very difficult to go ahead and get reviewers to sign off on changes and push things through. So that ability to automate the process helped to shrink the development cycle and the overall time to market. Um, Jeremy, what about your challenges? So I'd say we'd had, we had three major challenges at Listen Technologies. The first one was build material control. And with lack of the, a lack of a real way to to have a revision control within Excel, our bombs became really impossible to work with and uh, a lot of our revisions became mixed. And we didn't have an opportunity to redline anything in Excel because it's a little bit more challenging with that also. So what happened was we would have errors in some in our manufacturing procedures. Our second one was uh, having files scattered throughout the universe, basically an email or SharePoint or Dropbox. And what, that was a real, that was a real challenge because you, you didn't know where to go to get the file that you needed. So 
that was a real challenge for us. And the third one definitely was the change management process that we, we kind of worked our way through. And I don't know how it, how it all came together in the end, but it did, didn't come together as, as well as we needed it to. So it was, it was very tedious task to, to, because the products, inventories and bombs and histories were not all linked together. Revision histories were a lot of times scattered through emails and it was an ex exceedingly difficult ta uh, task to track why, when, and how a change was promoted. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think that, you know, as I've worked with different manufacturing companies over the years, that, that scattered environment or having silos of information definitely creates more confusion and errors um, with everyone who's trying to get that product out. So that's uh, very interesting. All right. Um, our next question is, what process or what benefits or process improvements have you seen since implementing PLM? And Julie, let's get your thoughts first. Sure, Scott. Uh, PLM has helped us really keep some consistency in our data and, and in our processes as well. And then once we're able to build a repeatable process, the PLM system has really shown us where our gaps are and therefore has fostered some continuous improvement uh, improvements for our process, which have helped to expedite time to market and time to prototype. Uh, we've also seen improved communication with our suppliers external and with our internal teams as well. Nice. Yeah, continuous improvement. I'm sure everyone on the call today is interested in that. So I appreciate those, those thoughts. Jeremy, what about you? So my main role focuses on producing products efficiently from the concept to the end of life. And when the PLM has provided a very pr structured process that I can reinforce throughout my organization. And because of this, it's caused a real cultural shift in the way that we look at engineering within our company. It's also allowed for more efficiency during the production designs and for our engineers. It's cut down on, on manufacturing errors, as I mentioned earlier, that we were having, especially in the prototype and alpha stages, which has really hastened our time to, to market and decrease delays. Our communication with our manufacturing partners is much more seamless and can be easily captured and archived. And Streamlining all of the change management processes going from a request to a change to implementation has really been a great benefit for us to see the, the path that we have taken during that process. It's helped us improve our, our, uh, our definitely our, the way that we do things at, at Listen. And finally, the centralizing of all the source documents, as I mentioned earlier, has been, been a great asset for our company. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, I've seen those cultural shifts occur too. Sometimes companies or engineers uh, and other product team members don't want to have more controls placed on them. But once they start using a solution like this, they see that the ease of uh, uh, collaboration, the ability to get information and know that you're looking at the latest and greatest information uh, is definitely uh, of great benefit. Um, Christine, what's been your experience? Um, so as you can imagine from what I discussed earlier, the time to review and approve changes post PLM has really significantly decreased. Um, what used to take us about a week to get done can get done now in about a few days and we can really react to the needs of our business in a much more efficient manner. Um, personally speaking, I've learned so much about all the operations that affect Imagine by taking over the role of implementing Arena. Um, since Arena allows you to customize your system to suit your needs, you need to understand a good portion of your processes so you can help set them up accurately and uh, to benefit your overall company. Um, I think our team now recognizes the advantages of knowing where all the documentation resides and the information now gets to the right people when they need it and that's a real benefit for sure. Um, they also see the advantage of being able to find information using searches rather than having to comb through folders to find something they're looking for. Got it. Yeah, you talk about customizing the PLM system. And sometimes when people hear that, they go, uh oh, I need to be a coder. I need to code to make changes. So can you explain what's involved when you say customize um, to the audience? Oh, absolutely. So um, what's really nice about Arena is you can set up different categories and attributes um, that will allow you to um, search easier and find information easier. Um, so for example, you could like look up a PCB for a particular um, 
product type and it will give you all the items that are associated with that. Got it. And while we're on that topic, I don't know, Julie or Jeremy, do you have anything to add with regards to uh, your experience uh, with customization of the system? Yeah, Scott, I, I agree with, with Christine. I mean, um, a process that worked for Sonos eight years ago when we first configured Arena is typically not relevant in our business model today. I mean, and, and to, to think our, our database has changed quite a bit just even in the past 12 months, never mind eight years ago. Uh, we've reconfigured it recently for scalability and, and to update some of our process models. Uh, we've removed legacy attributes. We've added new and improved attributes. We've reconfigured how we source components. Um, we've implemented previously underutilized features in Arena. And we've even changed some of how we, we number, uh, do internal part numbering. So it, it's been very flexible and tail tailorable to our needs recently. Great, great. And for us, Scott, I think each culture that you know, of, of company that is, you know, looking into a PLM is going to look at things such as change management or uh, the way they structure bill materials a little bit different. And because of this, one of the things that has really been a great feature for us and it's provided much benefit are the custom attributes within arena because at that point we can customize our database with our nomenclature with our uh, the language that we speak and it's because like i said it's a little bit different from company to company and much like uh julie we've gone through you know, several, several small to large iterations of our PLM to make it better. It's, it's something that we have learned over time. And, and uh, you know, today we are much, much more efficient than we were when we first started. And that's because of the flexibility of Arena PLM. Got it. Got it. Very good. All right. So let's go ahead. And our next question is, uh, many companies have distributed product teams uh, or they outsource manufacturing to some degree. So describe your company's manufacturing model and how PLM has helped you. And Jeremy, let's start with you. Okay, our company does all of the engineering, uh, electri uh, electrical and mechanical engineering domestically. We use an overseas contract manufacturer, CM, to obtain parts and to build the product. The communication of the production requirements and sourcing is all done through Arena PLM. Our conversations, actions can be captured and archived, you know, within the within the database. And and, it, and the PLM has really given us a good history of the things that we've done. And again, it's man, it manages all that documentation, all the compliance documentation, all the files for. Uh, a PCB build or for all the SolidWorks files for, you know, or pro E files for the engineering side or the mechanical, mechanical engineering side. So right. So now we have a really good precise historical record of each part that we've used and when it's used and how it was sourced and even a cost history. Yeah, that's great. I think, you know, that audit trail, that precise historical record, as you call it, is key. And it helps when you're, you know, not only making your initial decisions, but also to prevent finger pointing between the internal product teams and your contract manufacturers and or their suppliers. So that's great. Christine, what about you? Um, sure, I'd imagine our procurement team does a great job at communicating our requirements to our vendors. Um, and um, with a PLM system, they know now where to get the latest drawings and documents and bombs and there's no guessing or having to ask someone where to go to get the documentation so that we can send it to our vendors so that they make us the right parts. Nice. And Julie, what about you? Um, what's, what's been your experience and how has PLM helped your company? Uh, Scott, the ability to share the data with our teams and our suppliers immediately upon release eliminate, has eliminated the need for emails, which everybody touched upon here, which has its, its caveats of, you know, it, it, they can be incorrect, correspondence or content missed or superseded easily or lost in an inbox. So it, it's easy to share data with our, with our CMs, with uh, Arena PLM, but we are also able to share only the data that our suppliers require and only after it's been approved by Sonos, which increases both reliability and privacy. Got it, got it. Yeah, I think that's a key point about your CMs and your suppliers. So can you share maybe a little bit more about how Arena helps you control what your suppliers and contract manufacturers have access to? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, Arena allows us to leverage uh, license privileges or sourcing of components and assemblies and then file privacy settings to help us keep our data secure. Got it. Got it. Um, and it seems, you know, clear that PLM's made it easier for all of you, uh, our panelists today, to collaborate with your teams and your supply chains. I'm just curious if anyone has any other examples or might be able to discuss how things were done maybe prior to using PLM and how, how the world's changed. So we, we would use Word documents for our change management processes. And obviously with a Word document, you really can't, can't capture the historical, uh, you know, history of, of that part, you know, from, from concept to, to end of life, because yeah, it's broken out in a bunch of different Word documents. And, and with our revision control, we used, we had, we were using Excel uh, and, and Excel. The one thing that it really didn't give us the opportunity to do is to really bring in to our, a library of parts and have them shown where they are used, which would, which really would cut down on the sourcing and, and duplication of parts. So that's where we were in the past. And, and, you know, today it's obviously in one great big, you know, database of, of that's easily accessible. And it's also very, it's, the, the way we've created the metadata, it's very, very quick to get to where you need to be within that database. Got yeah, and I'd, I'd have to say, um, to jump on Jeremy's um, thoughts about Excel, so we used to use Excel for our bombs as well. And um, what was a little bit challenging was when you have a bill of material or several bill of materials that share the same component, you'd have to go and remember to change each uh, specific bill of material to update a component when something changes. And what's really nice about PLM is when you change a component, it goes and finds all of the bombs that are are um, related to that component and you can do the change all at once. Nice, yeah, I, I know in my past life working with bill of materials, you know, they're typically multi-level from a finished good top level all the way down to the lower level assemblies and trying to do that easily in Excel is difficult. Um, and you also don't have quite the ability to link uh, each of the components and assemblies to all the associated information, whether it be CAD files, specifications, drawings or things like that. So I appreciate that. All right, so beyond managing complex product information, some of you deal with various types of regulatory compliance. What types of compliance initiatives do you deal with and how has PLM helped? And Christine, uh, why don't we start with you? Okay, um, we deal a lot with ISO 9001 and AS 9100 requirements, and we've been using ARENA training for about a, a year now, and we're documenting our training program here and it's really working well. Um, our external auditors are really impressed with the training plans that we've created and the records that we're keeping. Um, our next goal is to go live with training reassessments um, so that we refresh operators and um, technicians over time and implement quizzes. And it's really a nice way to have one place to keep all your information, again, without relying on spreadsheets and forms. Um, we also utilize uh, ARENA to capture and document our contract review. Um, customers have been super impressed by this also. So we send out customer purchase orders for review, review and approval right through the system and it creates a permanent record of the review. So again, no signatures are needed. Um, so between this and training, a lot of good information is kept right online. Nice. Yeah. You know, we actually use training ourselves and we use it for our quality processes and procedures. And it really helps to make sure that the entire team is trained at all times, that we have accountability for that training just in case some issues arise later. Uh, Julie, what types of compliance issues do you deal with? Uh, at Sonos, we've recently expanded the compliance module in Arena, Scott. It, it helps us track and share our material testing for mainly for robust compliance right now uh, with our internal teams and with our suppliers. Uh, suppliers can electronically drop files for us using Arena File Drop, and then we're able to tie them to our components in our PLM. Uh, we also have an integration with Silicon Expert right inside of Arena, which helps us track the life cycles of electrical components to mitigate risk. And together when, uh, with both of these functions, when a component is reused from design to design, 
uh, especially all the Rojas material data is attached and reused and it eliminates the need for redundant testing and expedites time to production release. Nice. Yeah, having that, you know, being able to source the right parts with your uh, integration to Silicon Expert, I'm sure that really simplifies the entire, um, the entire compliance process. Great. And Jeremy, tell us about your experience. Yes, so as we've become a worldwide company selling to other countries, uh, using the compliance portion of ARENA has been very critical for us. We deal a lot with the FCC. We also deal a lot with each country's different uh, spectrum of uh, frequencies. That, and because of that, the testing is all a little bit different from country to country. We also have to use documentation for safety and we use documentation for Rojas, Reach, We. Uh, so the, the PLM has really become a central source of, of capturing all of the information that we need. One of the things I like about Arena PLM's uh, compliance bill of materials is you can look at each individual item within a bill of material and see if that item is compliant to the compliant certification that you're looking for. So a good example is Rojas, which a lot of us will deal with through. It will show me each individual item and then it will all, it will scale up to the top and show, show me if the, if the whole bill material is, is compliant or not. So. Yeah, that's great. I think that ability to see, um, you know, throughout your entire bill of material from the top structure all the way down to the bottom, um, whether things are compliant to Row House or Reach or We or other types of compliance initiatives is, is real helpful. All right. So our final question for the panel before we get ready to turn it over to the audience is when it comes to using PLM, what final thoughts or tips might you share? And Julie, um, let's start with you. Uh, thanks, Scott. I, in my previous company, I, I did set up Arena PLM, um, and my experience with Sonos has been slightly different in that when I joined Sonos, uh, they already had Arena PLM in place, as I mentioned, since 2011. And I've seen how it has served Sonos differently from the different phases as our, our company has evolved from a, from a smaller startup company to a public company. And with that change has come a different business mindset, and our processes have been reevaluated. And we've been able to really reconfigure Arena to support these changes without impeding production. Nice. Yeah. You know, whether you're a small um, startup company or midsize or even a large global company, being able to scale with a system that you get in place is key. Jeremy, what about your thoughts? Yes. Being able to be a part of the, you know, the original architecture, the original thought process of Arena, you know, I've, I've been... I've used all of that knowledge to really get myself to a place where, and the company to a place where it's very efficient. Uh, the PLM is a real game changer for our company when it comes to down to that efficiency. Having all the important product information and, and product history in one place is drastically cut down on the time spending uh, to look for a document or to look through emails. Our process flows are much more defined and structured. The bill of material control, as I mentioned in the past, and the redlining features are very critical to give us a uh, where things have changed from a previous production. And this has been a very great asset for our CM. Uh, capturing all the sourcing information is obviously critical, as we mentioned just previously. Change management now is a very systematic process within our company and it works very efficiently also and really uh, something that we've worked hard on to make it better and, and, it's, and it's much better for our CM. And finally, it's with all the customizable features, Arena PLM has really provided our company a way to, you know, to inc include our own intricacies and, and nomenclature that, that are very familiar with our team. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, all of these things kind of come together. And if I was going to summarize what you said, you know, it's that control, that ability to automate the process and to be able to collaborate easily with your entire team. Um, Christine, uh, what are your final thoughts? 
So I think the biggest advantage of moving towards a PLM system would be moving your business towards a more disciplined mindset. Um, even if the engineers and technicians and users don't know they're coming along for the ride, because as you grow your business, you really need to standardize your processes and you need to rely on accurate data. And Arena really helps with this challenge. Um, it's a pretty user friendly system that's easy to configure, as I had said before, and quite customizable and you don't have to have a computer degree to set it up and implement it in an organization. I like to say if I can do it, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so there was one other thing. We've been using Arena now for over three years, but it seems like we still discover new features and parts of Arena that we're still not utilizing. And I wonder if this is the same for you, either Julie or Jeremy? Yeah, Christine, you know, as I mentioned, our, our workspace has changed quite a bit and um, we're still leveraging new modules within Arena, such as compliance and even the quality module too. Um, but really, we all talk about the, the user interface of, of Arena, its ability to customize or reconfigure it as the business needs and requirements evolve. And often other tools require an outside contractor to support as they're heavily coded in um, the workspace that we started with isn't isn't what we have now. And that doesn't mean that it was set up wrong. I mean, it was set up to meet our needs at the time. No one has a crystal ball, but as Scott mentioned, Arena is very scalable. So while you may not have all of the answers when you start with Arena, it allows you to adjust and um, as, as you, your company evolves. And for our company, uh, I think it's much like any other company when you start using it, you believe that you're complete when you start, when you turn the, the database on and it's ready to go. But there are so many things in our complex business models and through manufacturing that get brought up that it really is, it, it's really important to have something that's customizable that's going to be scalable for, because when you first, your first thoughts and concepts of, of the PLM will change, you know, slightly and things and little things will need to, will need to be enhanced. And so what that's, I think that's real beauty of arena PLM is given, is given that custom custom ability to customize, to be able to customize uh, product, your, your, your bill of materials, which documents you need, all of these great things that you'll be capturing inside of there. And, it's uh, it's been very helpful for our company. Thanks. Right. It's nice to know that we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Yeah, I appreciate uh, all those thoughts. So um, thanks to our panel for um, sharing your thoughts and insights. And we're going to turn the time back to Elaine, and she will address any audience questions at this time. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, everyone. That was a great discussion that I'm sure a lot of the information was relatable to our audience and also sure it sparked some good questions. So um, with that, we're going to start answering the questions that have already been submitted. And if you have questions that arise during this session, um, feel free to continue to add them, okay? All right, and our first question, which is kind of um, two-pronged, Let's see, for companies that share information with their contract manufacturers, is the information you share with suppliers secure? Can you control the type of information the CMs have access to, such as types of changes or specific product information like cost? So I wanna say that I believe Julie and Jeremy both referenced working with um, CMs, so maybe the both of you can answer this, and Julie, I'll start with you. Sure, Elaine, thanks. Um, as I mentioned, we control visibility to our CMs with our data in a few ways within Arena. And first, with regards to cost, uh, when a supplier is invited to your Arena space, their license is configurable, read, write, or both. And then you also have the option to allow them to view cost information. Um, once their license is set up, then the next thing we can do is add them to components and assemblies that are sourced to them. And this way they see the assemblies that they're building or components that they're, that they're making to spec. And then lastly, if the, inevitably we have proprietary information that we cannot share outside the company. So we're able to restrict their views by putting a privacy setting on the files so that way we want to keep private from all of the suppliers. And then also we have the change management aspect as well where we can control visibility and suppliers may participate in our request process. And then they also participate in the implementation process of the uh, ECOs that they're invited to participate in. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Jeremy, did you wanna add on to that? 
we control the experience for our CM, much like, much like what Julie has, has said. Uh, and the way I look at it isn't that they were necessarily, you know, making a custom view for what they, what they need to see sometimes, but I look at it as kind of eliminating any possible confusions because I can really build the item, the bill of material to be exactly what they need to see so that there's no going you know getting anything mixed up like we had done in the past and again that so it's showing all this relevant information has really helped rcm and they've they make comments to us about being able to only see that and having any of these some of the other stuff hidden from them but this administrative stuff that we would use here at listen technologies all right, great, thank you. Um, so our next audience question is, what type of PLM process performance data is readily available from the system? How well is it working and how much has it, has it improved? So I'm not sure if anyone has information on that. Um, yeah, I'll tackle that. So okay. um, right now um, we actually uh, utilize uh, a lot of reports to gather data and uh, look at you know what kind of um, timeline it takes um, to get changes through and how well they get um, processed and implemented and I think it's really worked well um, like I said before is I think it's you know we, we went from about a week to about two days and what's really nice is you can put a a um, approval deadline in for changes or something like that to actually you know um, uh, uh, make Make sure that you get uh, approvals complete in a certain amount of time. Um, there's also another module called um, Arena Analytics and that you can actually do a lot of real metric based data. Um, we're just learning how to implement and uh, utilize and tap into that resource. So as we get more and more familiar with that, um, I think it'll really uh, uh, make a difference uh, here at Imagine. Great. Thank you, Christine. Anyone else? If not, we'll move on to the next audience question. Um, what was needed to process your data into the Arena Solutions format? Just the data, were there worksheets, forms? How long did the implementation from document spreadsheets, et cetera, to PLM take? I can take this one. All right, Jeremy. So then what's needed is really uh, you need to start gathering. You need to, you need to probably need to have some long meetings on deciding how you want your database to look and with it, when it comes to part numbering and what files you want to have, the way your bill of material structure needs to be. And then from there, you, you really start gathering documentation for, you know, and it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty intuitive upload into arena. It's not, it's not that difficult. You do, use, you do use a CSV file to start to form your items and, you can, and it's a very good asset to use that CSV file also to build your bill of materials. And the way that it's laid out is very intuitive and is, is not, not that challenging. But the main thing is making sure you have your ideas and your processes on bill of materials, even though they may change in the future, have them in, have them in line so that you can, when you go to upload, uh, it, it, it looks the way that you want it to look. And it's, it's, been, it's not that challenging and something that can be done fairly quickly. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So we actually had a, um, a person from Arena help us and it took us about, I would say six to nine months to get, you know, everything uh, mapped in and, you know, set up correctly the way we wanted it. Um, but I would agree with Jeremy that it's not that difficult to actually upload the information and get the information um, the way you want to see it. And it's not really that painful to kind of set it up. And what I liked about it is you can customize it and kind of redirect and move and, and play a little bit in both the test environment and then move that over to the production environment. So all in all, it was, it was a pretty nice um, seamless uh, transition. You know, and, and to add to that, Christine, um, We've, as I've mentioned, we've done numerous reconfigurations of our workspace in Arena. And um, in addition to the CSV files, there is an API option to do um, imports as well. And, and we have had uh, outstanding support from Arena in, in that regard to be able to bulk update fields that may not be uh, importable 
for most users, they've really um, done a great job supporting us in that regard. So however you do that, you do go live, it, you would do a bulk update later on down the road in a similar way. So it's, it's good to understand the process to make it easy to update later on as an admin. Great. All great answers by all, everyone. Thank you. Um, so our next um, question is about uh, engineering change processes. Improved engineering change processes were mentioned during the discussion today. And can you elaborate on how ECOs are managed and processed in ARENA and how are team members notified? Um, well, here at Imagine, I think it's made my doc control person's life so much easier. So when a change is submitted for approval, um, all approvers get notified via email. And you can even add extra people in, to comment only or to have an optional approval based on the change that you're processing. Um, there's a change administrator that handles all of the ECOs and it's really easy to run reports to see how many changes are awaiting approvals or pending. Um, it sure helps us stay on top of changes um, and getting changes processed in a timely manner. Great. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would agree with that too, Elaine. Um, okay. you know, at, as the design nears the production realization phase, you obviously want to include more team members as part of the, the change management approval process because the impact is far more significant than it was earlier on in the development phases where sometimes only the immediate team needs to know about the change. So we do customize our ECO routings based on the design maturity and the ARENA admin is able to uh, configure these as well to make sure that the right team members are participating consistently during the design process. And then on the output of that, our users who are on these ECOs are, are usually notified with their either their ARENA dashboard or with the not, um, auto notification emails from ARENA as well. All right, great. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, did you have anything to add to this? Sure. I, our supplier, uh, is has access to ecrs also and, and you know engineering change requests and because of that that really can get the ball moving in the direction of making of the change management process so we really use ecrs as 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 a way to capture all of the potential changes or and some, sometimes the priority of the change and i do that through custom attributes having our CM on that same page and having them submitting ECRs to us is, is very, very beneficial for us. And then our team will discuss those and move them to the, throughout the ECO process. And after that request, again, after that request has been processed and the ECO has been created, submitted and tracked, it will go through implementation. And I have visibility to all of that, which is critical for me to know where we are, and with the change and why it happened and uh, and when it happened, when it occurred. All right, great, thank you. Okay, our next question. Um, we're a small company and don't have a lot of processes in place. How flexible is ARENA when it comes to that? So um, I think this kind of goes across the board as well. So maybe Julie will start with you this time. Sure, Elaine, um, as I've mentioned, ARENA has really allowed us to shift out of startup mode where process was almost secondary to product development and then towards corporate mode where we have to rely on processes now to keep our data consistent for all of our internal and external customers. But in the year that I've been here with Sonos, we've reconfigured it, as I mentioned, with multiple mass updates, added countless features, implemented unused modules, and it's really, it's really grown with us to meet our process needs. It's been very scalable, as Sky mentioned before. Um, it's it's key to mention that Arena will not develop a process for you. However, it will fit whatever models you do have and will help you visualize your gaps. And it's tailorable to close those gaps. We haven't been able to find a situation yet that Arena was not able to meet our needs. And it's really facilitated the continuous improvement model. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Christine, do you have anything you'd like to... Yeah, well, I think Arena is a great way to start using a PLM system to start pull uh, to put the processes in place that you need without bogging down your business with a lot of uh, paper and red tape. I agree with Julie. It helps facilitate continuous improvement. Um, Imagine is really considered a small company. We're about 100 people and it works really well for us. That's great. Thank you. And then how about you, Jeremy? 
Arena really provides a, a good structure. It's very, a, a very rigid, rigid structure to get your company moving down the right path with your processes. But it also has that customization, fe those features that really can, you can, you know, add, as I mentioned in the past, you can add a little bit of your culture into Arena. So each company will have a slightly different process flow and it'll have, you know, and, and the data that will need to be captured will be a little bit, that will be a little bit different. At Listen, I've really created, uh, I've created a few custom attributes that have really helped us to become more efficient with our, with our PLM. Okay, awesome. All right, so we are running up against the time here. I'm just going to ask a couple more questions and then we're going to wrap it up for today. Any open questions we are happy to address after the webinar today. So um, with the next question, our company is working towards ISO compliance. Did having Arena or PLM help simplify the compliance prep and audit process for you? And I want to say Christine was the one that spoke about her ISO certification. So Christine, yeah. do you want to take this one? Absolutely. That's a great question. So personally, I think that um, when you implement a PLM system before you move towards ISO certification, it really helps to allow you to build your documentation system in a manner that will help you when you do have your audits. Um, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have to look through paper books to find a procedure or worse, hunt through folders and subfolders trying to find a work instruction or something to show an auditor and you just can't find it. It may it seemed like we didn't even know our own system. So with a PLM system like Arena, you can put in a simple string of characters in a search field and the item comes up with a list or all the items come up in a list. So the smarter you make your system by putting the different categories and attributes, the easier it is to find your information. Um, I'm now a convert. I no longer believe in the smart part numbering system, and I don't believe that's the way to go, and it really took ARENA implementation to get me to see the light. Great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So this will be our last question for today. Um, there was a reference to integration with Silicon Expert. Does this integration enable direct access to component information within Silicon Expert? And I want to say that Julie was the one that spoke about that integration. So Julie, can you take this question? Yeah, sure, Elaine. Yeah, we, we do use Silicon Expert uh, here at Sonos. It's, we use it as a standalone tool and also as an integration with uh, the BOM viewer in Arena. And the Silicon Expert BOM viewer in Arena will allow you to do a real-time data lookup from Silicon Expert and pull that information into a BOM view in Arena. And from there, you can view the, the risk of the component, the lifecycle status, and even alternates all from the Silicon Expert database. And it really gives our engineers and sourcing teams a quick check of the overall health of their bombs right from Arena. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, these are really great questions for today. So that will wrap up our Q&A um, portion of today's webinar. So in closing, I would just like to thank our, your customers, Christine, Julie, and Jeremy, and our moderator, Scott, Scott for a great discussion today. Um, I also want to thank our audience for attending. I do hope you found this to be um, informative and educational. So as a friendly reminder, we are going to share the recorded version of this webinar via email. We will also be happy to address any of those questions that may have not been able to answer due to time constraints today. We'll, ha we'll be happy to answer those after the webinar. And with that, that concludes our session and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.